Hello everyone, how are you going? Welcome to How Pilots Found Out About the World Trade Center Attacks. Now, it's something that I've never really thought about. You know, most people, virtually everyone was just on the ground, boots on the ground, but what about the people that were already in the skies? My name is Beverly Bass. In 2001, I was flying a Boeing 777 as a captain for American Airlines. It was a beautiful day. We even commented when we were over the North Atlantic what a gorgeous day it was. I'm Mike Franklin. I was the uh, co-pilot on uh, Flight 49 from Paris to Dallas-Fort Worth. As we're crossing the Atlantic, we have one of our radios on what is called Airborne Common. Okay. Say that again, please. Said we like we lost the primary target about 20 west of Kennedy. And we had so that would be a means by which uh, aircraft can talk to one another to try to get updates on weather, winds, uh, turbulence, uh, what's happening. Say that again, please. It was over the uh, common frequency. We heard somebody uh, chirp up that uh, an airplane hit a tower in uh, New York City. Oh, well then, that is a hell of an opening, but my goodness, you would just be going, wait, did I just hear what I think I just heard? Is there some kind of breakup? Is there some kind of static? Is a radio playing up? Is someone intercepted the radio? What are you talking about? A plane just hit a building. And I mean, even just to be commenting on the fact that it is a beautiful day, I mean, I do want to check because, okay, so American Airlines Flight 49, was he the, okay, he was her co-pilot. That makes sense. I was wondering if they were just grabbing two separate people, but no, that was the same flight. And so it will certainly be interesting to hear what they have to say because they are telling the same story. And so together we can really get a good picture about what it was like. I mean, this is only obviously one particular plane's perspective but even just giving us all the background information and the technical information about okay yes yeah, so we have multiple radios and we have one of them just set to this common frequency and that's where we receive the information from Say that again, Fire. it was over the uh, common frequency we heard somebody uh, chirp up that uh, an airplane hit a tower in uh, new york city atlantic inbound aircraft this is us air 27 we're receiving word from our dispatch that a plane has flown in the world trade center in new york city Okay, not necessarily alarming or anything at that moment in time. You know, we talked about it and we thought, you know, it what? must have been a small airplane. And then about 20 minutes later... Something came. <laughs> came across the radio again that another aircraft um, hit uh, a tower. Uh, and it was my experience uh, from the military that uh, I can recognize a coordinated attack. Hang on a second, I'm interested to know and just trying to figure out what do they mean it wasn't a big deal that a plane of any size hit a building? I mean, I guess it could be an accident if it is a small plane that has lost 100% of its engines being its one engine, but still to be how to hit a building, that's... I've never heard of any other situation like that. I mean, to be fair to him, once he does have the information of the second plane, he then does realize and go, hang on a second, this is no accident. And he doesn't even supposedly have the size of the aircraft yet. He just knows that there's two planes that have hit the World Trade Center. And his reaction is also interesting to me because he, he almost laughs about the situation, but not in a positive way. I think he's laughing at himself for not understanding the true weight of what has just happened. They're going, like they said, just a light aircraft, something like that. And then 20 minutes later, they go, hang on a second, this is not what's going on. About anymore. 20 minutes later, something came. Look at this, he goes, something came and it's like... <laughs> In that moment, the entire puzzle is in front of him, but I guess he's just beginning to see what the puzzle is going to be. You know, he doesn't have the box to work off. There's no prerequisite about what it's going to be. He just knows that the plane flew into the World Trade Center and then another one 14 minutes, or I guess for them 20 minutes later. All of a sudden, we start seeing some of the airplanes turning around, making a 180, which you would never see that because the North Atlantic tracks are directional. They're one way and nobody turns around on them. And so my first thought was, hey, Beverly, uh, why don't we consider turning this thing around and taking people back from where they came from? She goes, you know, that's not a bad idea. Uh, why don't you see if you can begin that. I mean, I am almost most surprised by the fact that they have been given no direction and no communication from air traffic control and let's call it 25, 30 minutes, you know, I mean, to be in the air traffic control office during that time would have been absolutely ridiculous. I cannot imagine the kind of scene that would have been going on in there just going, what do we do? Like, 
what do we do? We don't know what to do. This is unprecedented. There's nothing that you can work on. And so I am wondering if the planes that turned around before they did, did they make their decision on their own? Or was there some air traffic control communication there? Or what is going on there? Because I'm fairly sure air traffic control just handles everyone, no matter if you're a light plane, commercial plane, fighter plane, like everyone is checking into the same system. It's not like American Airlines, Qantas, Emirates. I'm fairly sure that's not how it works. I mean, I'm sure for some pilots and even just air traffic control, the decision to tell people to turn around all of a sudden, and especially travel against the airstreams are going to be quite a difficult one to make dealing with all the calculations about how much range you've had how much airtime you've already had and all those different factors and how to kind of prioritize different flights and all those things you know if you've just taken off you can virtually fly anywhere in the world or anywhere in North America but if you're just about to land and then you get sent away well yeah options are very very limited and nobody turns around on them. and so my first thought was hey Beverly uh, why don't we consider turning this thing around and taking people back from where they came from? She goes, you know, that's not a bad idea. Uh, why don't you see if you can begin that? As soon as I started to pick up the radio, we hear we're common. We tried coordinating a return to Europe with Shenwick Control, and they denied clearance. They're not approving any reversals. And I set up straight in my seat and began to process. I'm not really worried about what's behind me, like a hijacking type scenario. At that moment, I was truly focused on what my end game was, getting this uh, aircraft and the people on the ground. Wait, hang on a second. That's pretty insane. I guess if they've already flown from Europe and they're going to LA, for instance, then that's going to be taking them back over New York. And so is that why they basically just drew a line in the sand and went, no one is coming near here. I mean, I'm fairly sure that all of America's airspace was just a complete restricted zone. I can't even imagine the amount of military jets that all of a sudden were just dispatched. But my goodness to go, okay, we were thinking about turning this around and just flying it back to Europe, but we are now not allowed to do that. I wonder who can make that decision and why the other planes were turning around it. But also they were flying over the Atlantic and so that surely they went past the line of the sand, you know, they surely could have turned around. I guess the decision was the decision, but geez, it's like I said, a very difficult one to make. And so even though this is only one plane's perspective, or I guess to be fair, two pilots' perspective on the same situation, I wonder how much discrepancy between all these different stories would have, because if you had someone that was basically about to land in New York at JFK, I cannot imagine just what you were seeing, you know? That airport is so busy, and you just see these buildings going up in flames. I mean, I guess at first you wouldn't know what would happen, but then and you come over comments and you go, hang on a second, wait, what? Like your entire world would be shattered. And of course, it would be the same story for air traffic control, just going, what just happened? But more so, what are we going to do about it? How can we possibly just manage all of these planes? We don't know which one is going to be doing what anymore. And so I guess if nothing else, it truly shows you how much experience it can take to fly a plane. Let's just say for argument's sake, anyone can jump in a cockpit and just grab the control and just go, yeah, yeah, whatever, it can just fly a plane. But to be able to make those decisions going, okay, I'm making the decision to make a 180, even though they're telling me not to or whatever it may be. And just to have your entire world rotated going okay I thought I was just going to have a normal day it was a beautiful day over the Atlantic and I've just come from Europe lovely time and then hang on a second I now have to fly into probably Canada and just deal with an entirely different situation than I was used to and in saying that I did find it incredible that his first reaction wasn't okay what is going to be happening to me do I need to be watching my back how is this entire thing going to unfold no his first reaction was how do I get this bird on the ground and so without glorifying the tragedy of what occurred on that day it is honestly incredible what was accomplished due to those events you know to be able to just get all of these planes to just take them elsewhere you know wherever they were going not there anymore for the pilots and air traffic control and everyone else that just had to deal with this insane situation to be able to pull it off in a matter of hours matter of minutes whatever it may be it's just insane you know i honestly think if you just gave those orders but there was no event everyone would just laugh at you and it would never be done but just given the circumstances that they were put under and the absolute need to be successful in their mission of just getting all of these planes on the ground it kind of no matter the cost you know send someone 200 kilometers away a thousand kilometers away it doesn't matter we'll deal with their luggage later it doesn't matter all of these things it is just completely by the wayside when you just have to deal with an event like that but honestly it has just left me with so many more questions than i started with you know like i said this is only one plane's perspective one plane traveling over the atlantic what about planes that were flying away from new york city what about planes that were in australia in europe what about all these different air traffic controllers perspective there are so many different things that are going on in that day you know as everyone that is old enough talks about where they were when they found out whether that be in the car or on the news 
whatever it may be, just people have their stories, but that is generally just a fleeting moment in time when they first initially found out. But what about everyone that is working in that industry? The hours and days that that entire incident turned into and just the massive amount of resources that were poured into it because I had to. And like I said, I have no intent to glorify the tragedy of what occurred on that day, but it is honestly incredible what these individuals, pilots, baggage handlers, air traffic controllers, all these personnel managed to pull off. But anyway, in saying that, I reckon I'm going to call it there. So thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, feel free to do the YouTube algorithmic things down below. Also, if this is the first video of mine that you are watching, then make sure to go check out any other ones I've done. Also, make sure to go check out the original video down in the description below. Or hey, maybe even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future. But all in all, have a good one and see ya.